All right, so in this video, I wanted to give you guys an up close and personal view at the Nike KD11 and let you guys know my thoughts on the new flagship model for KD. What's going on guys, Has here, collectivekicks.com. And if you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. Today's video, let's go ahead and cover the KD11. This is gonna be more from the casual perspective. And I know it's a performance basketball shoe. It's not a casual shoe. Now that we got that out of the way though, this is a non-performance review of the KD11s. And basically I just wanted to give you guys kind of my two cents on the model and the overall design elements and then how comfortable they are especially from a casual lifestyle perspective. For those that don't remember what the KD-10 looks like, that was the previous version of the shoe. The KD-9 looked a little bit similar to that. And you could see the slow evolution from the KD, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now we have the 11, it's crazy. I remember the KD-4, that was the pinnacle of the KD line in my opinion. It was the one where everybody was talking because the price point on those were $95. KD did not want to charge more than $100 for a pair of his signature sneakers. And it was a noble effort back then and now the prices are much higher. You can see that this model right here cost $150 at retail and that's probably the appropriate price point for these. The KDs cost more than the Kyries and the PGs but the Kobe's and the LeBron's are the more expensive tiered products from Nike Basketball. So these are basically middle of the road uh, for what Nike basketball offers. And I think that the design side of things I think is a good thing, like it looks cool, but there's a couple things I don't really like. And honestly, it's not really up to me in my displeasure for the fact that this tongue is the way it is because this is again a performance shoe. Katie's also a really narrow foot individual and I'm a wide foot dude. So this shoe is definitely narrow for my feet, not really, really good on feet for me. Um, so that answers that question. For those wondering how comfortable these are, it depends on your foot. If you have a really skinny, narrow foot, then you guys are probably gonna love this just like KD does. But uh, for me, wide foot gang, not really the best because it's so dang narrow. It's kind of a difficult shoe for me to be able to actually put on, to be honest, uh, from a casual perspective. And if you're looking at something where you can just slap on a pair of shoes before you run out the door, like what I basically have to do every single day because uh, I'm always behind schedule, um, then this is not the shoe. Like this is like, take your time, lacing your sneakers up and, and then um, you're good to go. Anyways, let's go ahead and cover the upper first. You can see it has two different types of fly knit on this shoe. There's actually this fly knit on the toe box area, which is a lot firmer and it feels like almost double layered versus this knit material, which is soft. And then you also have it stretchy on the tongue. It's not stretchy down in this area because it's reinforced. I don't know if you can see that, but it's reinforced all the way through around. And this material obviously is not gonna be stretchy. So you don't have that reinforcement on the tongue section where it is extra stretchy, but you do have it on each side. They do have a really high cut on this shoe. Normally it would come straight across this way, but it builds all the way up for this weird, bulbous, awkward looking tongue to myself. It's just not really a preference, uh, but you do have a really nice soft uh, knit around the ankle, soft enough that you could probably even wear no socks or no shows, even to hoop in. Uh, which could be a plus for those wanting to do that. The cool little detail is a metal grommet right here. It's like an anodized bottle cap and it says 11 on it in Roman numerals. You have the traditional KD logo on the back section of the shoe. On this colorway though, you can see it has the EYBL, which if you didn't know, that stands for the Elite Youth Basketball League. And that is kind of like a tournament, I believe, or a league that uh, obviously is basketball inspired and sponsored by Nike. These are also known as the Peach Jams, which also has something to do with the Elite Youth Basketball League. As you work your way around the back of the shoe, you have kind of a nice leatherish type material. And it has an interesting looking pull tab that sweeps up and then out right here. And this is kind of plastic on the back side of here. So it's like a leather and then plastic on one side. Then you have some Frankenstein stitching on the back. Then you have the Nike swoosh on the inside. One of the coolest details of the shoe that I really like that I didn't notice until I got them in hand, you could see there is a see-through sole on this, but underneath it, there's some color and some zoom. But when you rotate the shoe from the back and the inside of the shoe, you could see it has a cool paint splatter and midsole, and it just pops a lot. And it's really, really soft. And I believe this is React. It says that this shoe features full length zoom air as well as React, which is a really awesome pairing. Uh, I will tell you, it doesn't feel like React. It feels more like Zoom. It's definitely a lot more firm than you would expect. And I mean, especially if you're coming off of the Epic React or the uh, React Element 87s, th these are like ridiculously firm. Also, this is encased React. And if you didn't know, the very first basketball shoes that did release 
um, which came before the Epic React, those were also encased React foam. So you just don't feel it as much when it's encased into rubber. This one does have the added benefit of having the full length zoom, and that does give you the extra little spring and the extra responsiveness when you're actually performing in the shoes. So I think that that is kind of a, uh, the heritage of the KD line. Like the zoom is kind of the backbone, it seems like. Another thing that you see on the KDs a lot is these giant rope laces. And I don't know why they actually go with this style, specifically year after year, it seems like, but it's not bad. They did the same thing with the 10s, just oversized, ridiculously large rope laces. And probably not necessary, but, uh, but it is what it is. You also do have fly wire that are locking down the laces. And you can see for the fly wire, there is extra reinforcement for the stitching down here and then also here as well, but in peach color so you can't really see it because it kind of blends in. I forgot to mention, obviously there's hyperfuse with a Nike swoosh across here and then also along the toe guard area. And this is definitely reinforced down in this area so there's a lot of structure to the shoe. Also in the bottom of the shoe you can see the signature. Just a look at the sole for those wondering, the traction patterns look pretty intricate and looks pretty decent, looks kind of like a thumbprint sort of. And then you have this window right here, which is a zoom window. And this is actually really nice. It, it's literal and it tells you what you're actually looking at. Sometimes Nike forgets to do the simple things like this and not everybody knows that this is what you're looking at. So it says KD 11 cushioning system, full length, full length Nike Zoom Air, Nike React midsole foam. So nice little addition there. So this is a shoe worth buying. For me personally, I like it, but it's not really one that I can put in rotation. It's just too snug on my foot. It was really uncomfortable for me to put on. I just don't have the right type of foot for the shoe. Like originally I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't play basketball on them, so maybe they're not for me, but it's not even that. It's just the whole build quality of the shoe is just not made for wide footers like myself because it's made for KD, he's a, he's an athlete. Anyways, what do you guys think about the KD 11s? Is this something that you guys are interested in buying? Eventually you're waiting for the right colorway. Is it a shoe that you've tried also and just doesn't really fit your foot? Or do these fit you perfectly? I wanna see your comments in the comment section if you guys want to leave them. And I personally think that they have some cool colorways it seems like for this model coming. I do not love the flying it uppers on everything. I know that it's a performance shoe, but I feel like flying it is really limiting for what you can do, at least on the Nike ID front, which is part of the reason why I really slowed down doing the whole Nike ID thing on all of the models. Before this, I was doing a Nike ID on every single Kobe, LeBron, uh, KD, and I would do one every single year for the next models. But I stopped doing that because there just wasn't very good options, unfortunately, available uh, for that. Um, it would be cool if they changed up the materials a little bit and made it better. The Kyrie 2 was my favorite one. I did three of them because that one was a lot easier to do uh, because they had just better color options. But anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on the KD 11s. I think that uh, it is a cool line that Nike's continuing. I like some of the direction, some of it's just not really for me, but I still appreciate what they're doing. But that's pretty much the video. If you guys wanna buy a pair of the KD 11s, check the links in the description. But anyways, if you guys are new to my channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you guys wanna be notified of when my videos go live. And appreciate you guys for stopping by and watching this video, we'll catch you guys for some more videos very soon. Peace, guys.